So another long gap between videos here on the old Yard Art Model A. It's been busy. Spring has finally rolled around here. I've been working a lot on this 28 Dodge Coupe. Redid the whole chassis on that. I'll have a series on this one coming up too. 68 Coronet. Uh, basically been doing all the floor pans in here. Could not get this torsion bar mount. That finally came in. I already got all new frame rails in the back. The trunk floor in. And next, pretty much, I'm going to end up putting the quarter drops, quarters, and all new front floors. And along with that torsion bar mount that I just showed you up here on the hoist, well, we got another Nova. And actually, I say another Nova because yesterday I just finished up a 73 Nova with a big block swap in it, rebuilt the whole engine, had the engine rebuilt, installed it in there, and got that running and out of here. Over here under the 51, you're going to notice another Model A chassis. This one is actually a 1930 Snowbird. And if you guys don't know what that is, I will do a video on this shortly when I get the body and engine and trans and that thing. Snowbird actually has tracks and skis on it. We got bogey wheels up front, big steel tracks on here. It's a snow machine, basically, or for getting through mud or whatever terrain they would have needed to get through back in the day. So basically, we'll be putting that one together shortly. I will be putting that one together shortly. Up on the hoist, the 51 has also had a lot of progress. I am trying specifically at the current moment to get these two out of here. These have been here for a very long time, five, six years each, and they need to go. So both of them are very close. I'll probably shoot a video uh, pretty much on completion of each project. I'll probably do another one on this uh, Snowbird. That's pretty interesting stuff. Maybe you guys will get a kick out of that one. Also, a bunch of other projects pending around here up in the front room. One that I think is going to be really cool. This is actually the Snowbird body. This 58 Caddy. Coming up after I get the uh, 51 and that Snowbird done, this 58 Caddy is going to be getting a 6.2 LS with a 6 speed installed into it. And I think that's just going to be an awesome project. So that one will be coming up shortly as well. But for today, today is all about the Yard Art Model A. So here is the plan with the roof structure on this thing. As you can tell, we've got some major damage in the back that is going to be the first thing I am going to address. I'm going to get the Porta Power out, which I already have over there on the floor. I'm going to get that thing jacked up, get some pressure on it, and hammer out and work that sheet metal in the back. Get all of that straightened out. Got a little bit of a dip over here on the side as well. That is the first order of business. Get all the lines straightened out around the top. And then right here, as you can tell, I already have one piece of half by half, I believe this is 14 gauge wall tubing, arched to match the header panel perfectly and that art should match in the back too. Now that's usually what I do when I frame my roofs out on the Model A. I match my tubing to the header panel and basically we'll probably do four or five bows basically. These are basically going to be the new bows across and also frame out the entire perimeter with half by half 14 gauge wall as well. So I just made a video a little bit ago on the mini metal roller. I made this thing Oh geez, probably three, four weeks ago now. Got a couple of wheels in there. Basically this is what I use or used to arch that first bow that's sitting up there on the header panel. And then as for the corners where it gets tight when I do the perimeter around the car, the corners in the back are a really tight bend, which the mini metal roller will not bend, but I did set up my other bender over here on the floor and actually just had to clean out the anchors in the floor pretty good because I don't think I've bolted this down in the last eight years. But I got it bolted down right now. We're set up and ready to go. I made a test bend already right here. It's a little over bent. But if we go up here in the corner and put that up against the corner here, you can see that is pretty darn close to what I need. So. We're gonna work it like that for the perimeter. I will use that bender to do the back corners like this. Use the mini metal roller for the arches down the side and the bows. And that is going to be basically where we're starting off today on this thing. So let's get going.
Alright, so this back section actually didn't take much work to straighten out. Obviously had the porta power under it, did a little hammering, straighten this out. It's pretty darn nice right now, but I'll probably go ahead and do my finish hammering after the roof is all on. That'll give a little more strength so I can finish planing this out, dollying this section out back here. But it is actually pretty close right now. Down here in the front, you'll see I put a weld. There was actually a crack right there. And basically after hammering this and putting a few tacks on that crack, I let the porta power off and it stayed exactly where it should be. So I'm good to go here on the back side. Now, if you look at the side here where I just jacked that up, that's basically probably how I'm going to operate it. Um, I'll just jack this thing up and then put my tubing in the side here to hold it because actually it really wasn't bent. It's just down a little bit because the wood structure is gone out of it. You can kind of see the arch is in the sheet metal here and this is actually pretty strong the way this return is on the roof. That shape is still in there. There's no damage to it. It just sinks down here because there was a larger wooden bow for structure across the car behind us over to here and that's why I'm actually sagging at this point. So basically I just jacked the thing up till it looks about right and I can make myself a template off of that design match it side to side i'll make one piece of tube for here that matches this and one for over here on the other side and that is going to be basically it for figuring out my arches of my roof structure i'm going to grab this one here this one arch that i had made already and basically i'm going to go ahead and cut some tubing clean it up and arch five more of these i need one right here at the back to hold this i obviously actually i'm probably only going to do five i don't really need one up here this is its own bow up here in the front, but I will do one here and then one, two, three, four across the roof and use the header panel as the front one to weld my sheet metal down to. So yeah, that's about it. Four more of these and then I'll make the arches for the side in this different shape. It's a little more back here than up here and I can start welding this thing all together. So I've got my back piece of tubing worked into the roof line back here and as you can tell I was kind of working my way across and using this little piece of 18 gauge because this is what my roof is going to be made out of. Using that and working my way along to make sure that that comes out flush with the body when it's resting tight on this tubing. My roof is actually going to sit on that, my new panel, and I'll probably leave about a 16th to an eighth inch gap. That gives me room, something like that, to shoot with weld and then when I grind it off I'll still have a good amount of weld in there holding everything together. Now there are a couple of points as you notice I've been hammering here. This is kind of bent up. Obviously it's all bent up really. It was really smacked here from a tree or whatever fell on it and you can see I just hammered over here and that comes in really nice and flat to the body. If we come over here before I address this I want to show you I'm actually a little bit lower right here. That piece of steel is just a little hair lower than the actual body steel. And that's because it's kind of smushed. It's actually smushed back yet. So let me correct that real quick. Basically what I'm going to do here to fix that is I'm going to move this vice grip over so I have something to hold right here and put some upward support on it. And I'll just whack this with the body hammer a little bit and it's going to come out perfect just like over here. Let me take care of that quick and then I'm pretty much wrapped up here. All right, so move this over right where it's got this high spot and push up a little like this
Beautiful. It's a lot more smooth and even along the line. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I got a little bit of a high spot here yet. I'm gonna hit this quick and then I would say that this back section is good to go. Awesome. All right, so the back is pretty much wrapped up. I'm gonna move on to the driver's side. Same concept, get that tubing cut, tack it in along the way, and make sure it is exactly the thickness of an 18 gauge below the actual body line to the top of the tubing. Before I go ahead and start arching this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and try to bend myself two tight 90s for these back corners. I think it'd be nice to get those in. That way where this back section is lower yet, I can pry that up, get all this blended in, and use this corner tubing to hold the back section up into place on both sides. Let's go bend a couple of those and see how that works out. Well, that should work. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side right away. All right, so I've got all my bows welded in now. I got them welded on the top and all the welds ground off and welded on the verticals up both sides. I ended up with about six and seven sixteenths of an inch, about six and a half between each bow to evenly space them out front to back. It is all set up looking pretty good. And if we go down here and look from the back side, you can see that those match up really nice with the arch to the back of the car and the same on the front. However, up here on the front, you're gonna see that matches pretty nice to the same angle as the header panel here. 
but because the header panel is actually flat, it comes in straight here on the top, um, I'm actually going to end up, when I bring the tin into the front up here, the new sheet metal, I'm gonna have a gap on the back side, and that's just because basically um, this is coming in flat at this angle, and that sheet metal needs to come from here up to here, so it's not gonna be able to be pulled completely tight to the front here, or I'm gonna end up with a basically a buckle all the way across the front, but it will come down here, and actually if I came from here to the front edge, that would work really nice. However, I'm gonna stop that new piece of sheet metal probably a half, half inch short or even three quarters short, which is half of this inch and a half, because when I make the new visor for this thing, that's actually going to come into that profile too and be welded right into the roof skin so the visor kind of flows out in it. There's not gonna be a seam to the visor. The visor is actually going to be pretty much part of the, of the, roof, uh, of the roof tin once this all gets finished. So I think I'll probably stop about a half inch short. That gets me closer to the front and leaves that profile looking nice. I'll just tack that down the front when I get to that point and finish the complete weld off once the visor gets made. So. That's all ready to go. I just ran down to the old dollar store and bought myself some template paper. I'm gonna go ahead, jump up there, make a nice template that fits nice to the original steel on the roof line. Get that all taped together, throw it over on some 18 gauge and get that sucker cut out. We'll put it up there and make sure it fits nice. Make sure the crown and the radius looks good all the way around. If it checks out, well, it's time to bead roll it. Alright guys, so the roof skin is cut, and honestly it fits pretty good for the first time around. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the top side down here just because it's got oil and a lot of overspray on it because I painted a chassis over there a while ago. I'm going to wipe all the oils and stuff off so my marker stays on this, because basically I'm ready to start laying out my lines for the bead rolling. I don't think there's going to be much trimming, if any, involved for fitting this once I start welding it down, so that's good. So I'm gonna wipe this off, get it centered one more time, lay out at least a center point on the new panel for my center bead roll because I want them true with the car working off the center, evenly spaced to the outside so it looks nice that way. Using a little denatured alcohol here in case anyone wants to tell me how I'm gonna kill myself when I start welding on brake cleaner and or lacquer thinner or something like that. Center line. Now for the marking. the slip roll straighten that thing out you're gonna do what <laughs> we're gonna run it through the slip roll <laughs> the wrong way <laughs> makes it the right way that's better sweet 
Sweet. I like it. Yep, start from the center, work your way out. Sweet. So, Brian and I got that roof bead rolled the other night. A serious amount of bead rolling. I did them very close together this time. I really like the way it turned out. As you guys can tell, there's a little extra material to work with, and that's usually the name of the game when you put so many bead rolls into a piece of sheet metal like this. Now, I think we actually said that at the end the other night. Once you start putting some heat into this, it's actually fairly easy to work this, this oil canning out of this. Start in the center, pretty much center this way, start working out and then work from the center this way, kind of all at the same time. Once that heat starts going in there, this will look great once that's done. Before I can actually start welding that roof down on the inside, I do have to remember, because I have forgotten in the past, to put some foam or adhesive foam strips on the top of the bows because I, I have found out the hard way that if you don't put something on the top of these, some type of foam, or I think in this case, this time around, I'm just gonna use some sound deadener that I have. If you don't do that, that roof will rattle terribly off that steel structure up in the top. So I need to do that yet. Then I can start stretching the roof down. Now the other thing is I never try, I never try to have to put any type of welds on the bows up here. In the past, I have noticed it is best if you can just weld around the outside perimeter and put nothing, no tacks, on any of the bows because one little tack I have found in the past will really distort things. I think the first time around when I did one years ago, I started tacking from the center line of the bows working my way, my way out about every four inches or so, just put a little tack, and that really screwed the roof up. It was so visible where all the bows were after that. So nowadays, I do not try to put any weld on them. Just stretch the steel down around them, let it, goes, let it go where it wants, and just weld the outside perimeter, and that seems to work the best. However, that is going to be for the next video. I'm cutting this one off here. When I come back, I will get that thing all stretched out, fitted, and welded down to the top of the car, and Make a brand new visor for it so I can get that flowing into the roof line and all welded off to the car as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Till next time.